Hey, what's up, folks at home? Recreated a uh, uh, Punxsutawney weather station that doesn't that doesn't let you go out unless it's a certain temperature. All right, so let's see what's inside this Tupperware. There's a lot. Our main component is the Sensirian STS-3X high accuracy temperature sensor. What we'll need with that is its associated breakout board for easy connection, some solder paste, and a heat gun. You'll also need an Arduino, a lock type solenoid, some type of beefy transistor, a 220 ohm resistor, two 10K resistors, a 0.1 microfarad capacitor, a diode, a 12 volt power supply, and a wave trigger if you want to rock out some to some to some tweet sweet tunes. So basically we repeatedly request data from the Sensirian sensor and the Arduino takes that raw data and converts it into a standard temperature measurement. When it's too cold to go outside, the solenoid locks your door so that you can't go outside. And when the temperature is just right, it unlocks your door to the outside world. And then when it gets cold again, Sensirian's STS-3X temperature sensor is a teeny surface mount DFN component with eight LAN terminals and a thermal pad. It provides data via a pretty straightforward I2C communication protocol, so you can use it with any microcontroller or microprocessor that supports I2C. It's not exactly easy to plug a DFN component into a breadboard, so to get up and running, we'll need a breakout board and my astounding hot air soldering expertise. That's a funny word, expertise. Expertise, 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 expertise. First, we'll need to mount the sensor to the breakout board. To do so, I applied some solder paste with fine tip tweezers to each of the contact pads. Don't forget the one in the center. If it's a little sloppy, that's okay. When the solder melts, it will naturally spread out and become smooth and neat. Place the component carefully on the board. The solder paste will hold it in position. Grab your heat gun and apply steady heat until you see the solder become molten. Then remove the heat and wait for the solder to solidify. Then you'll want to do a quick continuity test to make sure you didn't short out any of the pins. Next, flip the board over and place this little provided pin spacer between the two sets of breakout pins and solder the pins flat against the contact leads. And now you have a breakout board! And there's the sky when the weather's fine. With the sensor attached to the breakout board, we have to build this enclosure. This way we can put it outside for accurate readings. So find an old Tupperware or something similar to create the housing for the device. I just ripped out the wire. I decided to pop holes in the lid of the container so that I can pop the legs of the sensor through and then access them that way and safely put the Arduino and everything else below. The Sensirian data sheet shows you how to quickly wire up the sensor, so I won't go into every detail. But it should be noted that I'm using single shot mode with ADDR tied to ground. We'll use the Arduino wire library, and we'll need to hook up the sensor's SDA pin to the Arduino A4 pin and SCL to Arduino A5. Both have 10K pull-up resistors. Remember, I2C needs pull-up resistors. I'm using a beefy transistor co to control the solenoid. I can't to control... I think I messed that up every video. If you don't have a transistor that can handle the current of the solenoid, you can just use a relay. It can handle the current required for the sol... Required? Required? Ah! Use a 220 ohm resistor between digital pin two and the base of your transistor. Now for the solenoid, one terminal is connected to 12 volts and the other is connected to the collector of the transistor and the emitter will be tied to ground, connected to the collector of the transistor. But don't forget the flyback diode. The solenoid is an inductor, as you guys know from our previous videos, so we need a flyback diode to protect the transistor. I wanted to make it fun, so I added some extra digital write statements to trigger a sound card to play songs of the season. And now it'll stay on for a second. When the weather is out. You was cold. The data sheet provides this equation for converting the first two bytes returned from the sensor into a temperature measurement in degrees Fahrenheit. With everything plugged in, open the serial monitor and you can view the temperatures. If you look carefully at the code, you'll see that if the temperature is above 80 degrees, it unlocks the doors to the outside world, but if not, it locks you inside for the rest of winter. Find the best door to the outside world. 
Luckily, I have this door from a couple videos ago. Place the container on the back with some type of adhesive. And mount the solenoid with the right hardware so that you can be locked inside until it tomorrow when it's really nice out. It's supposed to be 80 tomorrow. Man, how am I ever gonna go to the grocery store? It's so cold out. I wish a hot air gun would come and just turn everything on. Take a wrap of a meal.